is a wrapper over SQLite. It makes working with databases on Android so much easier and is by far my favorite Jetpack library. In this video, I want to tell you how to use and test Room Calling APIs. And while we do that, I'll also share how things work under the hood. We're going to use the Room with a View Colab as a basis. So here we're building a list of words that are saved in the database and displayed on the screen. And the user can also add words to the list. In our database, we have only one table, the one containing words. The word class represents an entry in the table, and it needs to be annotated with add entity. We use add primary key to define the primary key for the table. Based on this, Room will generate an SQLite table with the same name as the class name. Each member of the class becomes a different column in the table. The column name and type is given by the name and type of each field. And you can change the name by using the add column info annotation. Actually, we recommend that you always use the add column info annotation as it gives you more flexibility to rename the members without having to change the database column names. Changing the column names leads to a change in the database schema, and therefore, you need to implement a migration. To access the data in the table, we create a data access object, DAO for short. This will be an interface called word DAO annotated with at DAO. We want to insert, delete, and get data from the table. So these will be defined as abstract methods in the DAO. Working with the database is a time-consuming I.O. operation, so this needs to be done on the background thread. And we'll use the room integrations with calling coroutines and flow to achieve this. We've covered the basics of working with coroutines in this calling vocabulary video. Check out this video for information about flow. To insert data, create an abstract suspend function that gets as parameter the word to be inserted and annotated with add insert. Room will generate all the work that needs to be done to insert the data in the database. And because we made the function suspend, Room moves all the work to be done to a background thread. Thus, this suspend function is main safe, so it's safe to be called from the main thread. Under the hood, Room generates the implementation of the DAO. Here's how the implementation of our insert method looks like. Coroutines room.execute function is called with three parameters, the database, a flag to indicate whether we're in a transaction, and a callable object. Callable call contains the code that handles the database insertion. If we check the coroutines room execute implementation, we see that room moves callable call to a different coroutine context. This is derived from the executors you provide when building your database, or by default, it will use the architecture components IO executor. To query the table, we'll create an abstract function and annotate it with add query, passing in the SQL query needed to get the data we want. In our case, all words from the word table ordered alphabetically. We want to be notified whenever the data in the database changes. To do that, we return a flow. Because of the return type, Room also runs the query on the background thread. Under the hood, Room generates the get alphabetized words for us. We see a coroutines room create flow call with four parameters, the database, a flag indicating whether we're in a transaction, a list of tables that should be observed for changes, or in our case, just a word table, and the callback. Callback call contains the implementation of the query to be triggered. If we check the coroutines room create flow implementation, we see that here as well, the query call is moved to a different coroutine context. Like with the insert call, this dispatcher is derived from the executors you provide when building your database. Or by default, it will use the architecture components IO executor. We've defined the data to be stored in the database and how to access it. Now it's time to define the database itself. For this, we create an abstract class that extends room database. Annotated with add database, passing in word as the entity to be stored and one as database version. We'll define an abstract method that returns the word DAO. Everything is abstract because Room is the one that generates the implementation for us. Like this, there is a lot of logic that we no longer need to implement, like creating the database, the tables, handling migrations, and more. The only step left is to build a database. We want to make sure that we don't have multiple database instances open at the same time. So this means that we need to create a single tab. 
one way to handle this is to define a room database instance in the companion object of our class and a get database function that builds a database. If we want room queries to be executed on a different executor than the IO executor created by room, we can pass it in the builder by calling set query executor. And that's all. So we've done quite a lot of work so far. Let's see how we test the work that we've just done. To test the DAO, we need to implement an Android JUnit test as Room creates a SQLite database. When implementing the DAO test before each test is run, we create the database. After each test is run, we close the database. As we don't need to save the data on the device when creating the database, we can use an in-memory one. And as this is a test, we can allow queries to be run on the main thread, but don't do this in the production code. To test if a word is inserted successfully, we'll create the word, insert it, get the first word from the list of alphabetized words, and it sure is the same as the word we created. As we're calling suspend functions, we'll run the test in a run blocking block. Since this is a test, we don't mind if the test blocks the test code. And that's it, we've tested our DAO. Room offers a lot more functionality and flexibility than what we've just covered in this video. You can define how Room should handle database conflicts. You can store types that otherwise natively with SQLite can't be stored, like date, by creating type converters. You can implement complex queries using join and other SQL functionality, create database views, pre-populate your database, or trigger certain database actions whenever the database is created or opened. Check out our Room documentation for more information and the Room with a View Code Lab for hands-on learning. Thanks for watching.